reviewing the verdict, so it's there. Uh, let's go now to, I've got something just in now from uh, Jacob Rodriguez, who is our digital reporter inside the courtroom. Former Congresswoman Corown, Corrine Brown, now we have part of the verdict in. Guilty on counts 1, 2, 4, 6 through 13, 15, 17, 19, and 21 through 24. Guilty on all those counts. Now, Eric, uh, you can help us analyze that. That is, that's a lot of guilty coming down right off the bat. And I, I've, I thought from the beginning that this would really fall along two lines, um, the, the, for, the wire fraud counts and then those counts that had to do with the tax fraud uh, or, or filing the false tax return. So it looks like they made a, a clean sweep from what I can tell. All right, so help us understand because a lot of people don't know what 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, or 13 right. mean. Right, so the, the first count was the conspiracy count. That was the conspiring with the other co-defendants. The substantive uh, wire fraud counts were 2 through uh, 17, I believe. I don't have the indictment in front of me. And then the remaining counts were the ones that related to the tax fraud. So the jury has said that she lied to the IRS mm -hmm. and that she cheated on her taxes. With so. those last ones. Mm -hmm. And then what sort of penalty would you say might be coming from all that in a sentencing phase? Well, the, 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 the base offense level is going to be determined by either the intended amount of the loss or the actual amount of loss, whichever is greater. Uh, and that's part of what the probation office uh, will be charged with figuring out in the preparation of this pre-sentence investigation. Now help me analyze this, just looking at these mm -hmm. numbers. Th does that mean that she was declared not guilty on... No, because recall that some of these counts did not apply to her directly. Some of them were for Simmons only. Um, and so. So is she guilty on. From what I could tell from what charges? you read, it sounded like there was all of them. All the charges then, all the. That, that pertain to her. Okay. And so let's also talk about fines. I haven't heard anything about possible fines, money fines. Yeah, there is a possible fine uh, involved in the case. Um, and if the judge were to, and the judge can certainly impose that in connection with the uh, any, any sentence to imprisonment. So let's read this as we're going so everybody can understand. Um, you all uh, who are pr producing upstairs, let's start that at, again, if we don't mind. These are tweets coming in from Jacob Rodriguez, who is our digital reporter inside the courtroom. Um, and we're seeing count 10, wire fraud, guilty. And, and, J and uh, Eric, go ahead and analyze this. And again, those, those middle counts, the um, uh, two through about 15, I believe, uh, are the ones that dealt with the substantive uh, wire fraud. The, <laughs> the ones that pertain to actual transactions. And then count one there was the conspiracy. And so the jury apparently did not believe that she was an innocent bystander, that she was an old lady uh, who was taken advantage of, that she willfully knew that she, was, she had some sort of scheme and she knew it and she was directing it. It appears so. Again, remember that this had to be unanimous, so all 12 of the jurors had to agree upon this, uh, each of these verdicts. Uh, but it, it appears from this verdict that the jury did put credibility, at least some. They didn't have to believe everything he said, but with uh, Mr. Simmons, she, they obviously believed enough of what he said um, and not enough of what she said. All right, so let's go now to Ken Amara, who's standing outside the courthouse. And, and can the judge ask for decorum in the courthouse? How about outside the courthouse? Well, a lot of surprise out here. Denise Hunt is one of the uh, supporters of the former congresswoman. She's been watching this from day one. You've been had confident talks with her. And, and you said you were nerve-wracking and now guilty. Yeah, I mean, I'm heartbroken. I am overwhelmingly heartbroken today. I don't know how I go from here. I mean, it's just, I don't know how a lot of people on the north side are gonna recover from this, because this is overwhelmingly heartbroken. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. You've been talking with her back and forth, the ebb and the flow? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, you know, off and on. Um, and I know that she believed that she was innocent. And um, unfortunately, this day has come. I mean, a lot of people believe that it may come this way, but I think until it happens, nobody is really prepared for it. It feels like a death in your family. That's what it really feels like. Yeah, I saw you wiping your eyes as if tears in your eyes. Yeah, I felt like I was about to lose the blood flow to my legs. Like I just felt like I was about to just I just can't believe it. I, it's unbelievable. Should she appeal? Oh, well, absolutely. That's her right to do so under the United States Constitution. I but still believe in America. I still believe in the Constitution of America. Her defense was that this was not her doing. Uh, she was manipulated by Ronnie Simmons and Carla Wiley. Obviously, the jurors did not believe that. Well, obviously. Um, 
you know, I met Ronnie Simmons. I didn't think he was no good from the beginning. You know, I mean, he was, he wasn't the type of person I'd want to be around. I never met Carly Wiley. Um, I, you know, I haven't met her, Corrine, because I just met her about, I'd say about 16 months ago. I can honestly say she put a lot of faith in people. And unfortunately, that, that has come home to bite her. I, I mean, you just got to watch who you trust these days. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hunt. Thank you. For taking the time to talk with us. And again, we're uh, waiting on the Congresswoman and her other supporters to come down from the courthouse. Uh, I don't know what the reaction was. Clark Fork, it was there in the courthouse. Clark, are you able to come over? Uh, Clark can give us a better description as to exactly what the reaction was when the verdicts were read. Come on, Clark. Hey, Ken. Yeah, thanks for holding that mic. Uh, so here's what we know. 18 counts Corrine Brown was guilty on, and the counts that she was found guilty on tell us a little bit about what this jury believed. And so the, the big ones are conspiracy to commit wire fraud and that she engaged in a, cons a scheme to conceal facts. And so that's essentially saying that the jury bought in to this idea that she was integral in this system uh, involving the fraudulent charity along with the individual transactions. There were four counts where the jury found her not guilty. And so the, the reason there were so many counts is that they charged based on each instance. So a check or a money issue on September 16th of 2013, then another issue, July 18th of 2013. So they go date by date. The four not guilty counts were specific aid and abetting counts. What that essentially means is in those four instances, the jury did not believe that they either had the evidence or the testimony to back up that she was involved in that specific count, right? So on that instance, they didn't think that, that the burden of proof had been there. met, yeah. right? But in the other times, they felt like it did. And in the broader charges, the ones where there was conce a concealment or a conspiracy, they did uh, convict her and, and return a guilty verdict, meaning, and the big question was just overall, do they think she was involved in this? And, and their answer to that with those guilty verdicts uh, was yes. Um, the judge basically, after he read the 24 different counts, remember there's 24 counts, two of them she was not charged in, so 22 she's dealing with, went back to every juror and confirmed with them that the verdict he published to the court was in fact accurate. And they've answered yes. Uh, I'm reading an email right now from one of our colleagues upstairs who's still in the courtroom that says one of the jurors did get emotional during uh, the reading. Uh, many of them looked over at the former congresswoman, uh, one of them even wiping some tears. And the judge sort of acknowledging that, according to our colleague, uh, and saying that the outcome in this is, is an emotional thing, you know, and, and certainly they've been deliberating a long time. Speaking of emotions, this. were you able to see?